Hey guys, we're here in the labs and I wanna show you a few things about cue points and how they can be really powerful for helping you in the mix. There's two main ways to use cue points in Tractor. One is as flags or references so you actually know where you are in the song. This is really useful if you are doing a lot of mixing and you need to know, okay, this is where I'm gonna mix, this is where the song starts, this is the beginning of where I want to mix, so on and so forth. So first, let me show you those. I would always recommend putting your beat grid marker, which is white, and you can see right here very clearly, and it's separate from the other cue points, at the beginning, so that your white beat marker is always the first cue point. Next up, you've got something called a load marker, which is yellow, and this load marker is extra special because when you load a track, the track jumps to that point, and that load marker you always set where you want your track to start. And the reason for that is because I always play this song after another song with a specific mix out point. The mix out point is this little flag right here. And so I know that if I start this particular song at the other song's mix out point, then the phrases always line up and I end up with a magic moment. You could use the mix in flag right here, which is the flag with the left hand pointing, suggesting that this is a different place for you to begin the mix or begin mixing in that song. Again, because it's a cue point, I can jump to it quickly. And the best thing here is that visually, I have a clear indication of what is going on in the song at that point. The most important flag, of course, is the mix out flag. This tells me at this point in the song is a natural mix out song. You'll see here that I've actually done some little tag trickery here. So this particular song is 90s 1.1. Well, guess what? I know that 90s 2.0 goes after 1.1. And so if I start this mix right at this mix out point, I know it's gonna sound really good. And I set these two up so that I know that the phrases are gonna end up perfectly in time and the mix will work really well. And I've done that in advance so I don't have to think about it on the fly. So those are the main flags. You've got your beat grid, which you wanna use for the start of the song. You've got your load marker, which is yellow. You wanna use that where you wanna actually start mixing in the song. You've got your mix in marker, which is the red flag. You've got that for where you could also potentially mix in in the song. And then you've got your mix out. And you can load several of these. And often I'll have songs with several mix out markers reminding me, oh, these are all the different places in the song I can mix out. So these are just flags. They're not actually hot cues. They can be hot cues, but usually I'm gonna use them just as visual reference. Hot cues are a totally different beast. Usually we'll wanna use hot keys in two different ways. The first way is setting your hot keys up on specific notes in a song, as I've done here with this push the feeling on saxapella. And as we heard earlier, I set the hot keys up on each note. So I can play and grab each note and kind of change up the feeling of the song. That would be your cue juggling uh, hotkey style. The other style is to actually use your cue points more in phrases and put a cue point at the beginning of a major part or phrase in the song. So here's a song. Visually, if I look at the waveform, I can see that this is clearly a breakdown, this is clearly a breakdown, and these are big beats. But I may wanna actually use cue points to set up and tell me where different parts of the song are. So that's where the bass line or the main part of the song happens. So I'd probably want to go ahead and store a hot key there, turn that into a cue point, and I'll go ahead and delete this guy so that my hot keys are only at the big major points of the song. Usually you want to set those hot keys up in order and set them up in a predictable way. Like maybe number one is your intro, number two is your first verse, number three is your first chorus, and you're gonna to need to develop a system on your own so that you can jump to different parts in the song really quickly and really efficiently. So there's just a few ways that you can use hot keys creatively to help you out in your DJ sets and hopefully uh, reduce your stress while increasing your creativity. For more tips just like this, visit us on the blog at djtechtools.com.